Whenever you're dealing with helmets, you have to realize like all the materials that we're making are a light replica of something that you know doesn't really exist. It's closer to a facsimile of a motorcycle helmet than it is an actual NASA space helmet that's got all of the environment built into it. Having said that, the helmets had a lot of actual functioning devices. We had microphones and earphones. We did custom lighting for the insides of the helmets to help light the actors' faces, and we had them on positionable levels of power. We built on-camera visible airports right into the helmets. There were fans on their backs. We turned them on, we plug them in, and it circulated air. So we had all of those things built into each one of these systems. And then we'd have gold fluid fill helmets where it was basically a fluid plunger that worked via gravity. It's all derivative of Kate and Guillermo's initial concept designs. The Australians were very kind of rough and ready. The Chinese helmets were very angular. The Russians are the kind of steampunk classic del Toro look. They had a lot of interesting textures, probably more so than the more modern helmets in the film. There were fluid levels on the ears, a balancing system, jumping spider eyes, big giant red lights as opposed to just clear ports, surface details like leather, and brass, plating, and a big metal mechanical shield that went up and down that was actually an animatronic piece that we would cue on set. I've never heard anybody yell action louder than Guillermo del Toro. But he's very generous with information. He's very generous with how he wants to shoot things or listening to how things can be done. So you really feel like more than a participant, you're like, you're like a real ally on set. And we really wanted the helmets to be interactive and part of the storytelling process.